In this section, we're going to see what is threshold voltage. When we applied Vg from negative value to positive value through zero, then the corresponding psi s, the surface potential at at the oxide semiconductor interface or the potential drop across the semiconductor has changed from negative values through zero to some value around phi f and two phi f and so on. Now we define that this region when psi s is less than zero, this is accumulation mode and we said that in this region depletion mode and this region is inversion mode. In fact, when we observe the energy band diagram, so let me draw it here. So when this is EF, this is oxide, this is semiconductor, EI band bending has been exactly equal to d phi f and this band bending will be q phi f exactly right this is q times psi s this is the bulk potential and the band bending of ef has been equal to q times phi f then the surface has become intrinsic at zero it was normal neutral in fact as we kept increasing the potential of vg even the surface potential kept increasing which means the band bending increased when the band bending reached phi f which means this interface of oxide to semiconductor has become intrinsic so once after this value of phi f if the band bending increases in fact there would be so let me take a second case where this bending increases this is 1 this is 2 let's say that 2 is somewhere here which means there is some level of electron concentration at the oxide semiconductor interface which means there is some level of inversion already happening so we call this inversion but the amount of charge that is present at the surface is so less that it is not really considerable hence we call this weak inversion so the onset of strong inversion happens only when the surface potential psi s is equal to 2 phi f which means from the depletion mode derivation vg we have written as square root of 2 q epsilon si n a psi s over c ox prime plus psi s this was the gate potential. Now when this band bending where psi s is equal to 2 phi f, when psi s is equal to 2 phi f, what will happen? So it will be like this. So this difference would be exactly equal to this difference. In fact, I have exaggerated a bit. These two should be equal. Then the overall band bending would be equal to for the third case for the third case 2 phi f that is when the onset of inversion or strong inversion starts when we talk about weak inversion here this is in fact strong inversion strong inversion starts so in that case we call the vg corresponding to psi s being 2 phi f is called the threshold voltage so we can say vg at psi s is equal to 2 phi f is nothing but threshold voltage so we can write vg is equal to this value so substitute psi s is equal to 2 phi f so vt is nothing but square root of 2 q epsilon si na times 2 phi f over c ox prime plus 2 phi f hence we can say the threshold voltage is nothing but this value this is t 
the potential drop across the oxide this is the potential drop across the semiconductor and potential drop across semiconductor is 2 phi f that's why we substituted even here 2 phi f so this is called the threshold voltage vth in this section we'll see inversion charge and its formula we'll derive it so we'll take the help of the previous discussion that is inversion mode i'll take the same page so if you take that one in this case we have seen that charge qm plus the depletion plus the inversion which is q depletion plus q inversion should be equal to zero qm is equal to minus of q depletion plus q inversion we know what is q depletion in inversion mode we know psi s is equal to 2 phi f and vg is equal to v ox plus psi s which is given by qm prime over c ox prime plus psi s which is nothing but 2 phi f because beyond inversion a slight change in the surface potential would give rise to a huge change in electron concentration at the surface Hence, the surface potential at the semiconductor silicon dioxide interface wouldn't change much after threshold voltage. Hence, that's why I'm writing it is 2 phi f. Now, if Vg is given by this, let's find what this is. We can write Qm prime is equal to Q depletion prime, Q inversion prime in this way. Because areas are same, so they get cancelled. I get charge per unit area, charge per unit area, charge per unit area. Now, if we substitute here, Vg is equal to Qm prime is this. So, we have Q inversion over C ox prime minus Q depletion prime. We know minus Q depletion prime is here minus QnA we have. Okay. So, we have minus of minus plus. We get QnA xd max over C ox prime plus 2 phi f. We know xd max would be the depletion width corresponding to the surface potential which is nothing but 2 phi f. So we can rewrite this as minus q inversion prime over C ox prime plus square root of 2 q epsilon si na times 2 phi f divided by C ox prime plus 2 phi f. We know that this is nothing but the threshold voltage we have derived just before. So we can rewrite this as Vg minus Vth is equal to minus Q inversion prime over C ox prime. So we can rewrite this as Q inversion prime is equal to minus of C ox prime times vg minus vth so this is the formula with which we can find the inversion charge density so make a note this is charge per unit area and this is farads per unit area and note the sign here which is negative which indicates the inversion charge is actually negative in nature